Oh, recording in progress. That means we're officially starting. Yeah. Robin, can you hear me? I don't know. Okay. Kelly, you have the bell. Like, oh, like, yeah, it's all. It never used to happen. Oh, thank you. Oh, 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 Welcome everyone. I'm so glad you're here. We're so excited to be together for the next three hours. My name is Robin Hildebar. I'm from the Ford Family Foundation and I am a fierce advocate for home visiting. Glad to have you all here to help us. Yay! I want to just check a couple things. Pamela Ferguson and Ben. Can you hear us good, Pam? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. So one of the things that we learned this morning in, in technology is it's a really cool microphone, but it, it doesn't work if there's a lot of other conversations. So Pamela will only hear us if we talk one at a time. Of course, we're going to have our natural conversations at the break and such, but just down to let people know to be mindful of that. Um, and I would also like to introduce Pamela as our co-chair. So Pamela and I Partners in crime. Pamela, do you want to go ahead and say hello and introduce who you are and where you're at? Yes. You can, volume is good? Yep, we can hear you. Get a thumbs up. Great. Thanks, everyone. Hello. I'm Pamela Ferguson, the Home Visiting Systems Manager at Oregon Health Authority, Public Health Division, Maternal and Child Health Section. And I've been in that role for just over one year, which is pretty exciting. And before that, I was at a local public health department managing maternal and child health programs. And that was in Deschutes County, where I, where I live today. And I did that for 10 years. And those programs that I managed included Babies First and Cocoon, Nurse Family Partnership, as well as Family Connects Oregon. So coming into this systems work is just, for me, just perfect timing. And I want to say thanks to the team, Beth and Robin, for getting this set up, because some of you know I'm 132 miles on the other side of the mountains, and there's this big storm right now. And uh, my husband is up at Mount Bachelor, and he said it's gnarly and insane. So I, he, he typically doesn't speak with those words when he goes up to the mountain, but he said it's pretty bad today. But I'm just so glad I could join you even virtually. And I also want to thank Robin for her partnership in this co-chair role um, as we together will support this work. And I'm so excited to be at the helm of the ship with her. And I'm excited to see us make progress together as a steering team. So thanks. Thanks for having me. And um I'll be here the whole three hours, maybe not lunch, but um, I'm just glad I could I could join even virtually. So I'll pass it back to Robin. Thank you, Pamela. I am going to see. No, it's not working. <laughs> yeah. And that's not. Oh, wow. If you touch the pad in the center now, it's either. I think it's like once oh, uh, it's asleep or something. Maybe it goes in a sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so we get it back up. It's, a little it's like we all learn yeah. these wonderful skills about being virtual and then being virtual <laughs> and in person is like a whole nother level of skill. But we we all we also learn to not worry about perfection. So <laughs> we got this. So I want to make sure and make and have everyone's voice in the room and do some introductions first. Hopefully you had a chance to put some stickers on the three posters. Um, if you didn't, you'll have time. It'll be a fun thing to take a look at throughout our time together. And what I want to do is go around and have you introduce who you are, your agency, if you were representing an agency and your role in that agency. And then if you had time to do the sticker, you can say something about that. So for example, I'm Robin Hill Dunbar, and I put myself as an advocate and philanthropist. Um, 
and how many years you served or the, the type of scope of work that you do in a little pin in the state where you are. And then in the center, there's some stickies about programs that you're familiar with and make sure and put some of those others if you don't see something that you're familiar with. But when you get a chance, take a look at that and it'll be a fun. I see lots of dots, you know, fun, fun thing to take a look at. So I think I'm gonna start over here yes. with you and we'll just go around the table and do quick all right. Thank you, Robin. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Beth Green, and I work at Portland State University, where I'm the director of early childhood and family support evaluation. Um, but for today, my hat that I'm wearing is as the um, director of the Oregon Home Visiting System Center, which is our new center that we are here today to kick off together. And I'm very excited about that, um, this work. I'm looking forward to everything that we do together today and moving forward. Um, so anyway, in terms of dots, um, I put myself as other and university, although I never feel like I'm like an academic, right? I feel like if there was something else up there that I could use to describe myself, I probably would. I've had experience and familiarity with some of these programs, mostly in the evaluation role, but on the timeline, I've been around in the over 20 year bucket. So I've seen a lot of changes and developments and forward movement and steps backwards and just really excited to be here and feeling the energy around moving forward. Um, so that's me. I live in Portland, Oregon and I'm really happy to be here. Good morning, everybody. My name is Kristen Miyamoto. My pronouns are she, they. Um, I am the Regional Home Visiting System Transformation Coordinator. I just finished my first week in this position. <laughs> um, I don't have all that much in terms of dots, but I can share a little bit about my background. Um, I've been familiar with Head Start and Early Head Start Home Base. Um, and I worked with them for a couple of years. I was a Head Start classroom teacher, but there was a lot of overlap uh, between the programs. And I've most recently worked at the Research Institute at Western Oregon University, doing a little bit of systems work, communicating with the different regions in Oregon around child care. Um, and yeah, that's me. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ron Joseph. Um, he have pronouns. Uh, I'm also at PSU, uh, where I work with all of these lovely folks, um, supporting the evaluation work uh, for the OHVSCC. <laughs> First time I got it right. Um, but uh, yeah, I put myself firmly in the other camp. Um, I've been supporting home visiting evaluation for about four years at this point, yeah, 2020, I think, yeah, right when everything changed. Uh, but happy to be here. Lovely to see you all, and I'm looking forward to working together. Um, I'm Sue Miller, and uh, she, her pronouns. I chair the Early Learning Council for Oregon, so that's what brings me here today. Um, I helped found the Relief Nursery in Salem, I think, some years ago. I helped on the early learning uh, hub for Marion Polk counties because I, I lived in Salem for a long time. So I'm very familiar with those programs and, and they're all system development related. So this really fits into um, a lot of that work. My passion for that work. Thank you all for being here. I can know the dots and she or pronouns. I work at Oregon Child Development Coalition. I have lots of dots. Up there. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, I, I, I can remember home visiting when I, as a, I was a, I am a nurse and I was a public health nurse. And as public health nurses, we did home visits with a little black bag <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> and if you had a little black bag, everybody knew you were a public health nurse because that was our kind of a badge that you do when you went on your home visit. So I had to run back as I go. And so one of my stickers is sitting out there because I am an independent nonprofit agent. And then I've had experience with baby first, school, and then the 
Uh, Roberta Suzanne Hunt and I uh, she they pronouns and uh, part of the PSU crew um, and uh, I um, have been I'm a researcher but um, uh, two time um, healthy birth initiative client so uh, recipient of Home visiting, uh, which is what got me into researching. And um, yeah. So, and early intervention client. Um, so yeah, learning. I, I think of myself more as um, advocate and uh, and also very connected with community groups. Hi all, Susan Fisher Mackey, she, her pronouns. I um, am here in support of the PSU team and our facilitators today with a consulting group called Common Thread. Although before Common Thread, I was with a coordinated care organization for eight years in Southwestern Oregon. And before that, I was with an early learning hub. And before that, I was in direct service as a home-based um, specialist for early high start, I worked in the K-12 system. So. I'm just so grateful to be here and helping you all to connect the dots. Hi, my name is uh, Kara Williams. I am the Director of Inclusive Services at the Department of Education. Uh, and Inclusive Services includes early intervention and early childhood special education. We also hold regional inclusive services for students who experience low incidence disabilities and um, early language and literacy intervention, sometimes better known as the dyslexia work and K through the third grade coordination. So we're a busy team. Um, I have a, a long history with Head Start. I kind of came up through the ranks as an assistant teacher, a teacher, a mentor teacher, a director, uh, <laughs> or a, a specialist. Uh, and then I um, also did some um, coaching and mentoring in uh, for child care centers in Central Oregon. Um, and I'm very happy to be here. Of course, I'm the director of EIECSE, and I'm also a parent of a, a male adult who experienced disability, and so um, got to experience uh, that kind of as a parent as well. Mm -hmm. So I see myself always as a parent. <coughs> Hi, my name I'm also Kara. <laughs> <laughs> Kara, see, we were just talking about how sometimes we get each other's email. Oh, and they're like, oh. oh. <laughs> you met me. <laughs> my, my other Kara, the other Kara. Um, I'm the executive director for the Oregon Association of Relief Nurseries. Um, and I've been in that role for about six years. Before that, I was a uh, director of a relief nursery that helped to start the one in Yamhill County, where I was also the program manager of. Uh, Helping families and oversaw all of our parent education programs and was a parenting educator. So um, I liked that you guys talked about. I, I guess I got my root in early childhood by being a parent of a early intervention child. So doing the math, he just turned 23 on Monday. So that was 23 years ago. Um, and we still occasionally do get home visits from DD services. So uh, just thinking about like, oh yeah, I am I forgot I'm also a parent <laughs> of um, receiving services. Um and I think I've said all of the things, she, her pronouns. Um I am with Donalda of a, a dot of the Orn is the uh, how we pronounce it, Orn is a nonprofit and we oversee all of the relief nurseries in Oregon. So a little bit of Advocacy, workforce training, quality assurance, database, research and evaluation, contracting, so trying to keep track of all of those things. Yeah, so that's a little bit of me. Okay. I'm, uh, my name is Lisa Harnish, and I have the honor and pleasure of being the executive director for the Marion and Folk Urge Learning Hub right here. We're based here in Salem, but obviously we stand uh, both Marion and Folk families. Um, 
she, her are my pronouns. Um, you know, I have to say, I've been really reflective this year because this is my 10 year anniversary of being a cub. And I'm looking right at Sue because um, <laughs> she is the one that hired me. Um, and then prior to that, I was at the early learning division. And then prior to that, I was at the Department of Human Services. And to me, this, um, so I sort of grew up in this state agency system, right? And thinking I knew a lot of things. And then coming to this work, um, this has probably been the most um, fulfilling uh, portion of my career in mm -hmm. seeing how things really are knit together in the community or not knit together in the community, uh, but then being able to um, work with partners to help um, bring things together. And that to me is probably some of the most exciting work. Um, so I put my, I missed this chart entirely. I didn't even see it. But um, <laughs> I was able to put my stuff in lots about um, the different programs. And I struggled with most knowledgeable about because I've not been a home visitor. I've not been a lot of those things, but knowing a little about from a systems perspective, the impact that they have. So knowledgeable about, um, but I'm not the, the deep, deep end of the pool. Um, and then also on the different roles, I really see myself as being um, an advocate, um, somebody who can uh, really bring people together and do some things um, in that regard. Um, and then there's also um, some services that we offer at the Early Learning Hub when I think about parent education, which is a big part of home visiting, right? Um, so like how can we bring uh, families more um, central to the work that we're all trying to do. So, um, so anyway, that's um, that's a little bit about me. Um, like I said, I've been here for about 10 years, um, but then at the division for a couple of years before that. And so, um, again, I just love seeing family systems, education, and um, the community really wrapping around, um, around um, its youngest and their families. So, yeah, I think... Uh, good morning, Gwen Vassell, uh, preferred pronoun she, her, and I'm, I'm with the Department of Early Learning and Care. And I've been there now, it's going to be around 15 years, so going through some <laughs> transitions there. Um, my current role is the Early Learning Programs Director, so um, the office that I work with, um, Eight Nurseries is a part of our um, the programs that we support, Healthy uh, Families of Oregon, Baby Promise, Beautiful Promise, and then Oregon Prenatal Care Garden. And we're also working on now the new birth through five literacy plan, um, which we're looking to continue to really think about parent education and home visiting component of, of that plan. Um, I, I missed the sticker thing altogether. So I'm going to, and then I, even with my glasses, I can't see all of the options. So I'll do my best. Um, so working at a state agency, and I'd say uh, I'm familiar with um, many of the programs, not all. Um, before working at the state, um, I was in Head Start. I started over 20 years ago working with us and all the Oregon Child Development Coalition, and then um, moved to Eugene, um, where I currently live, and was the Head Start director there uh, before making the move to work for the state. So it's been, and I think through that all, there's been like McBee, Early Head Start, I'm trying to think, Healthy Start. I mean, there's been a lot of different programs um, that, amazing programs that kind of came through the Head Start um, agency as well. So happy to be here. And I just want to pass off and um, thank Sue and others who have like just started. I'm trying to think how long the Home Visiting and Fixing Committee and the work started. Has it been a year and a half or two years? <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> How, how fortunate we are to be here two years in with this group. So I just wanted to say this is really special to have this community. So happy to be here. Hi, everybody. I'm Anna Stiebotter. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a public health nurse. I never had a black bag. But I <laughs> work in the maternal and child health section as the Oregon Health Authority. Pamela is my manager. I work with a team of nurse consultants to support Babies First through Nurse Family Partnership and Family Connects. I um, 
I put my dot in the 10 to 20, but then I just did some math and I think it might be 20. <laughs> um, I had my first nursing job in 1997 in Deschutes County. I was a baby's first in maternity case management home visitor. Um, but then I had a stint <laughs> on the East Coast, so I couldn't count that time. I had to do some math. I've been a nurse family partnership home visitor and supervisor in Multnomah County. And I've been in this position at the state for 11 years. So a lot of time around home visiting. I'm not um, on this steering team. I am, Kara Copeland and I are here as representatives of the Oregon Home Visiting Systems Collaborative. Hi all, I'm Callie Lambarth. I use she, her pronouns, and my role is a researcher evaluator at the Center for Improvement in Child Family Services at Portland State, which houses the Oregon Home Visiting System Coordination Center. <laughs> I first uh, started working alongside home visiting programs as an evaluator for Healthy Families Oregon in 2007. And since then, I have supported some evaluation work connected to EI, early intervention, or childhood special education, to um, Head Start, Early Head Start, and um, Homey Family. So those are the programs I'm most familiar with. But I need to love learning more and more about all of them that exist and the work they do. Um, I So I work primarily, at, well, this opportunity is to work primarily more statewide. Um, my more recent connection to this work has been in Southern Oregon and Northern California with some regional home visiting system coordination evaluation. So I had to see how this process works. Good to be with you all. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Brown. I use she for pronouns. Um, and I'm tomorrow. <laughs> I'm the OHV SPC um, State Conservation Center. I think that's Getting closer to actually be able to say that. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited to be here today as things are kicking off with this group and meeting all of you. And um, we'll appreciate Grace as I get up to speed quickly, <laughs> jumping into things fully tomorrow. Um, my background is um, mostly as a public school teacher. Um, I taught for more than 17 years. Um, mostly in far Northern California, very rural area in Jersey County, um, but also in the, my first edition was in the um, Los Angeles Unified School District. And so a little bit of urban as well as very rural. And um, I came up to Oregon about four years ago where I first edition at Western Oregon University, working at the Center on Early Development in Central Coordination for Child Care Resource and Referral and on the SPARC um, quality recognition and improvement system team. And then most recently, I have been at the Early Learning System Initiative at OSU, Halley Ford Center, um, working on capacity building projects around professional learning the through the past. The home visiting systems and Eager to learn from all of you and more. Uh, my name is Katie Lyon, and I am from Roseburg this morning. It was a nice drive for anybody that didn't have to do it, but it was okay. Um, and I work for Umpa Health Alliance, the CCO in Douglas County. Um, and but my role there is the program manager for the system of care, and I have been in that position for a year. Um, worked for the CCO for seven years, um, so I am um, I am involved in that portion as well still. Um, and uh, for those of you that may not have a general idea of the system of care, we work with youth zero to twenty six, and try to bring together all of the systems organizations and programs that work that are um, working primarily with youth and in helping to bring them together and not duplicate our work, kind of um, join our efforts together, as well as um, take a look and address barriers that those youth and families face in dealing with multiple systems. So um, a lot of wonderful work has been done there. Um, 
I, but my passion has always been the zero to five um, age range and um, providing healthy starts to children's lives. So that is my passion. Um, I did put on there that I have two to five years um, experience within the home visiting program, but um, in thinking about it later, um, I think I'm at like seven because when it first started um, in Roseburg, I was part of it and um, started that kickoff. Um, and uh, I moved to Oregon from California over 15 years ago, and I worked with, um, I was the Child Protective Services, um, and I also worked with the welfare program in California and did a lot of work with trying to find resources for um, families with young children that struggled. So that is where I really learned about all the programs that California has. Um, and then when I moved to Oregon, started working, uh, managing homes uh, for individuals with developmental disabilities, um, and then Alzheimer's and dementia. So really a gamut of um, all of those. And, and in my current role, um, you know, having the opportunity to learn about all of the programs that uh, Douglas County has and that are available across Oregon has been amazing. And just trying to figure out ways to connect <laughs> the families to those programs and make them more visible. So I appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this. Hi, my name is Norma Hernandez and I am working for Adelante Mujeres. And I started in 1992 with OCDC, <laughs> my <laughs> wonderful school. And we support uh, all the migrant children. So I remember that it was wonderful to have a class with children that who speak Mixteco, Triqui, uh, Chuk, and Kankobat. And then um, I remember my classroom, they make a little group, they are talking, and then I go, oh, what did they say? What did they need? What did it want? Mm -hmm. I was just wondering. And then when I do home visits, uh, for me, it was like, a, you know, the most wonderful thing because we know the parents love their children. Sometimes circumstances or barriers that they face is what they take, uh, keep them away to get involved in children's education. But uh, to me, uh, I really appreciate the opportunity and the rule that OCDC put at that time that uh, you had to do home visits. You had to know the family in order to give the holistic service. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a neighbor had to help us out to translate mm -hmm. and then Later on, we uh, put together a committee, and then parents we uh, fill in as a helper, help uh, helping the translation for the basic things. So we make like a book in four languages, and then uh, so parents can read their children's. Uh, it was a very simple book, like color, shapes, and then feelings, and uh, a very simple language. But uh, parents help. And I feel like uh, it's so important to really um, do the home visit because that, that makes uh, the, the family feel like uh, you're important. You are very important and depending on the person because also not everybody is, it's okay. It feels okay to get into a new environment and feel res be very respectful to the environment. So I feel like uh, home visitors should learn and put themselves in other people's shoes to understand <laughs> that the circumstances because sometimes okay. they're renting a house or a, a, just a room and then when you know that so you understand better why the little guy is running 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 in the classroom obviously it's space they need that space so yeah and i'm i'm very happy right now because as a coordinator i can really advocate and put the pieces together and bring parents to schools because we have a program that is, uh, they have a, like an hour of working, uh, playing with their little babies, zero to three. And then also we do home visits. So we bring school to home and home to school. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Brenda Viola Walker. She, her, and your pronouns. I'm currently working with uh, Oregon State University OPEC in the Oregon Education Collaborative. Um, I work there as an outreach coordinator, supporting family and parent leadership around the state. I've um, been there for about two years, but prior to that, um, I started back in 2012 
So we'll go early head start in the family building block and the history. Um, right straight out of college, like that was like my <laughs> first job. And an administrative assistant there and just learning so much about the system, learning so much about the funding that went into it and why it worked this way. And it was just such a, <clears throat> it just, I don't know, it just like fueled me to want to know more. And I had an amazing supportive team that really advocated for me being in different spaces and spots. I like, rode the bus with the children. I did home visiting. I was in the classroom. So I got to do a little bit of everything. It was amazing. Um, and then eventually moved into positions being a classroom teacher, home visitor, and with the experience of um, doing all that wonderful work. And then eventually I left. So, oh, I want to you know, continue to advocate and support this family outside of it. And, to grad school, got my teaching license, did elementary school teaching, wasn't the same thing, went back <laughs> to early um, childhood system. <clears throat> uh, and, and then I transitioned into this position, and here I am now. I'm just excited um, to be here. And I mentioned that home visiting is the key. I think I think it's so important. Um, seeing it as a home visitor, changes that it can make, but then also it's a brand new wall. I've also seen it. Like, no, no. Really excited to be here. I was not, I'm not the main person on the team, Sophia, so I'm kind of here supporting her, but excited to be here. My name is Shelby Hamilton. My pronouns are she, her. I'm with the Oregon Parenting Education Collaborative at Oregon State University, but I certainly feel like Beth said earlier, like, I don't know if I would put my sticker in university. <laughs> um, I have been doing parenting education for about 16 years. Um, I was the... <coughs> Or I was the OPEC and the Early Learning Hub Director in Clackamas County for about 10 years. Um, before I moved to this OSU team, now I get to focus on professional development um, for parenting educators across the state and um, really thinking about those group-based parenting education opportunities. But we see a large amount of folks who come to our professional development system who are home visitors, who that's their primary role as well. So it feels like a really good space that OPEC can kind of lean into the home visiting world and know that we're all doing parenting education and it just kind of looks different in different ways. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you. Wow, I wanted to say yeah. there are two people who are here. Yeah. So yeah, just to oh, there's two people who couldn't make it today, unfortunately. We've almost got everybody here. Three? Oh, okay. Y'all tell me who the third is. So the first one I know is Dylan Brown, who is uh the COO of the Black Parent Initiative in Portland. Um <coughs> and she has a flu, unfortunately, so couldn't be here. Uh Mary Geelan, who is with ODHS, uh Oregon Department of Human Services. She is leading up their families first uh, legislation implementation. So this is rolling out new home visiting and other programs and could not be here today. Oh, and then Heidi Grogger, yeah, who um, Anna is re uh, representing. Heidi Grogger is the state program manager for Healthy Families Oregon. And with Kara and Anna, they are a triumvirate um, who head up what we call the Home Visiting System Collaborative, which we'll talk a little bit more about today. So I just wanted to own who else is a part of our uh, team, um, but unfortunately couldn't make it today. So. Wow, we have so much knowledge in this room. I'm so excited to be in community with everybody and to get to know you over this process. I'm glad we were able to be in person for this three hours as we will go virtual. It's nice to establish some of those relationships. I want to check in with Pamela. Pamela, have you been able to hear us pretty well? Yes, pretty well. Okay, just wanted to check in on you. So I'm going to really quickly make sure that you all, now that we have all of your voices in the room, our meeting goals are to learn from each other and strengthen relationships. So that's number one, build shared understanding and expectations for the work of the steering team. Provide input and shared values and vision for the Oregon Home Visiting System Coordination Center. I can't do the acronym. <laughs> no, I know. We need to be able to do that. That's good. I wanted to spend the whole meeting like working on our acronym, but it's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 we'll figure that out. Um, and then meeting at logistics. I just wanted you to know the bathrooms are this way. Please take care of yourself. Everybody being um, all together again, we just 
take extra good care of ourselves. Whatever you need, let us know if you can't find your name. There's some refreshments that you probably already found. Uh, your packet, I have one right here in my hand. Um, I'm not going to go through all the contents, but you do have an agenda. So if at any point you're like, when is the next thing? Definitely check that out in your packet. A lot of um, the people who are here and then a few others maybe are in the information that's in here. So you can kind of follow along if you heard someone's name and you're like, I need to follow up with them on this other thing. You've got your, their information there. Although I see it's not emailed, but we'll make sure everybody has contact. And there's some supplemental documents that you'll see as we go through the agenda today all out. We have lunch at 11.45-ish. I know we're running a little bit late so far, but if we're going to get there, it's going to be fun. Is there anything that I didn't mention on logistics, friends, that are helping me? And so what I would love to do is I'm going to turn it over to Pamela to just say a few words about setting expectations. And then after that, we'll get started. Thank you, Robin. And hi again. So yes. Just a, a few highlights for meeting expectations today. First, this is the start of a long-term work together, just the beginning. Second, be thinking about how we can support each of you and your unique styles and approaches, because I know we're all different and we bring lots of different perspectives here today and into the future. Third, we encourage you to focus today on getting to know each other and what experiences and perspectives we each bring to this collective work. And finally, to bring us together around the importance of belonging and connection, I would love to share a quote from Brene Brown, Atlas of the Heart. If you don't have it, please go get it. It's, it's wonderful. This quote comes from chapter nine, places we go when we search for connection. True belonging is the spiritual practice of believing in and belonging to yourself so deeply that you can share your most authentic self with the world and find sacredness in both being a part of something and standing alone in the wilderness. True belonging doesn't require you to change who you are. It requires you to be who you are. With that, I'll pass it back to Robin. Thank you, Pamela. That was beautiful. And I'm just going to welcome Sue Miller to and make sure your technology works before I abandon you. Thank you, Sue, for sharing. And I think in your packet, you can see um, some supplemental visual. Uh, <coughs> Flicker works well. All right. Good morning, everyone. Great to be here. Thank you all for being here and investing in this really exciting coordination work. Um, I'm just going to take a few minutes to explain how this all sort of evolved and how we all um, got here today. So. Um, as I said in the introductions, I chair the Oregon Early Learning Council, and the council is a body made up of 11 community members appointed by the governor um, and six agency directors. And I just want to acknowledge Denalda because she and I were on the council together for, I think, my first four, three or four years on the council. She was a great mentor, um, so thank you, Denalda. I'm guessing she's a mentor for others in this room as well. Um, so the council, um, there are 11 of us, of us from the community. And as I said, we have agency directors from these six agencies on the council. They're ex officio, but they actually show up at most of our meetings. Uh, we have a one hour segment in each meeting just for the agency directors. So um, we've got obviously OHA, ODHS, um, public education, but Department of Education, housing and community services, because we all know housing is such a foundation <laughs> for our family. Um, Delk, of course, which we're very excited about. And the newest um, addition to the council was HEC, the Higher Education Coordinating Commission, 
reflecting the workforce crisis that is in this state, basically affecting everybody, but certainly the early childhood sector as well. This is what we're charged with as a council. It's in state statute. Um, it's obviously pretty aspirational to think that we are going to coordinate a unified and aligned system of early learning throughout Oregon. Gwen's taking the lead in that for Delta. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're here, Gwen. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> We've worked together for a long time. Um, and then obviously the goal is that kids are going to be ready for school, uh, let's say kindergarten, and their families are going to be healthy, stable, and attached. So that's what is set up um, in state statute. For the council, this document, which is our five-year strategic plan called Raise Up Oregon, this is our North Star. It's online, of course, everything's online these days. So if you look at this document, and if you do a word search for home visiting, you will find in this document that there are seven objectives, 13 strategies, and 37 actions, which are all listed in your packets around home visiting. So I wanna just mention that so you know you are integrated throughout the entire document, and we are really relying on you all and developing a home visiting system because we can't get to this coordinated system in early childhood without home visiting being a key part. So, <clears throat> we just yeah, to touch screen. <laughs> you talk to the next slide. I was like, oh, forget all this stuff. <laughs> whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> That's magic. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you can't read some of it but anyway. This is sort of the history that we talked about a little bit before. Um, it was almost two years ago that uh, Kate Wilcox at OHA, whom I'm sure many of you know, she came up to me after a council meeting and she said, you know, Sue, there's been a lot of focus on preschool, um, you know, three and four year olds with the council for the last several years. She said, I think we need to go earlier. We've got to get to the prenatal to two and start getting a, a state focus on that age group because we've got to get kids ready for preschool, right? Mm -hmm. So that was sort of the genesis of this idea. The Early Learning Council only has one standing committee and it's the Home Visiting System Committee. Um, Peter Buckley from Southern Oregon and Peg Miller relationship uh, from Yamhill County co-chair that committee. It has representatives from all six of our agency partners sitting on it. Gwen is sitting on it right now for uh, Dell. Um, and so it's that committee that is really the arm for the um, council to work with all of you and simply work with Beth and her colleague and um, so first year we kind of identified the need to have a, a center, this coordination center, um, and we wanted it to be in a new, neutral location, so not embedded in any state agency or program. And fortunately, all of us have worked with Beth over the years. Um, and so um, some of us went to Beth and laid out this concept and said, are you willing to take the leadership role? And the rest is history. Thankfully, she said yes. So I don't know if we asked you like at midnight, so you were asleep. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> How it happened? I did say I had to think about it. <laughs> that was the <laughs> yeah, Oh, I need another project. <laughs> um, so we, we you know, started really just last summer, so we aren't very old. I'm delighted that Rebecca and Kristen are on board. Welcome. Barely on board. <laughs> <laughs> Almost on board. <laughs> but we're 24 hours ahead of you. <laughs> In spirit. <laughs> we can like consider this the first day though. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So delighted to have it kicked off. And you know, as I I talked to some of my fellow council members yesterday, we had our monthly meeting. 
um, I said, so, you know, this steering team and you all are going to be critical thought partners with Beth and her team. So and obviously listening to all of your introductions, you have amazing depth of experience and variety of experience, which will be super, super important for this. And I said to some of my council members on a break, I said, so this team's meeting, what are you looking for? What are you hoping at least is on their lips of targets? And they said, you know, what we've seen and what we hear about our gap in the home visiting world, because it isn't quite a system yet. We hear about gaps and they said, we know we have strong programs all through the state. Each of you who is involved in a home visiting program, we're doing great work. So it's not that we need to improve the, the models themselves, it's the coordination of the model. So there were four things that council members mentioned. One is, obviously, we've got to find a way to have equitable access for families. And that's going to mean programs working together so that families and referral agencies and referral sources know where to send families, what options to give. Another one, of course, was workforce. And yesterday's council meeting <laughs> focused on workforce. We had Ben Cannon there who heads hat and three of his top managers talking about workforce and what they're doing with us pushing them to start looking at early childhood as a category that they can promote. A third one was um, <laughs> data system. We've talked about that as long as I've been around. I think Denalda used to talk about that on the well, if I remember <laughs> correctly. How do we know what we're doing if we all can't collect the data and work with it together? Um, and then um, the fourth one we've talked about is we really need to expand the table. We've got to make sure that we're bigger than and broader than the traditional state agency directed models. And that's in you know, the culturally specific um, programs that are emerging or maybe have been around a long time, but haven't been at the table. So really encouraging the you to focus on that and I know that's a priority for the center as well. So with that, <laughs> I'll say thank you for making all of that happen in advance. So thank you. Um, and I know it's it's a lot, but it's also so important for kids and families in this state. And um, know that the council is here to support you. And um, Beth and Robin and Pamela and I talk a lot all the time. So we're there to um, provide any support that we can. And I really want to thank uh, Pamela and Absentia and Robin for being willing to put you So thanks. Thank you, Sue. Thank you for all of your passionate work to get us going and started over the years and so just really thank you for being thank you for being here today thank you for saying yes all <laughs> <laughs> right let's see if this works oh, okay. apparently only Pamela has or Sue has a magic set let's see there we go all right I'm going to click by that so I'm going to give you a little bit of overview today um, of the Oregon Home Visiting System Coordinating Center <laughs> as it stands today. Everything, I will also add that we are emerging, right? We are not fully formed. And part of what I'm going to be asking from this steering team is to help us get formed and help us really come together so we know what we're doing and we're doing the work that's most important to you and all of the communities that you represent. So nothing is written in stone at this point in terms of what we're doing. Um, we have some high level recommendations and directives that we are responding to that come from the council and from that home visiting system committee that Sue mentioned. So that is what you see up here. That, well, you kind of see it a little bit, but it's also, but I'll just read it. To strengthen and support state partnerships in support of local decision making and implementation of that 
equitable, accessible, inclusive, anti-racist, all the adjectives, family-centered system of early childhood home visiting, which is aligned with the rates of Oregon shit, right? Where home visiting is a part of that early childhood system, and we want to create a system that really lives into this charge. Our resources, you met Rebecca and Kristen, and we have a small but mighty evaluation team with Callie and Ron and myself. We have funding currently from the Ford Family Foundation and from OHA primarily, a little bit of seed funding from DELC. So one of the things we're looking for is getting cross-agency funding, but we have resources to really staff the work, right? Because that is something that um, I think Ford Family especially was really a leader around this and they funded a number of regional home visiting system coordinators. Now there's three in Oregon, recognizing that collaboration and systems work can't happen on the backs of folks who have full-time jobs. It takes a lot of effort to bring people together and to really keep the momentum going around what you want to see change in the system. It also takes all of the levels of support that I think we have for this home visiting system work. So that is what excited me, why I said yes. <laughs> I was like, I feel like there's a new, there's a real like motivation here and a leadership commitment to this idea. So here we are to get it started or to continue what's been started over the past in a lot of different ways. Okay. Um, a little bit about our approach. I think how we do the work is, almost more important than what we're going to be doing. Um, and we have really, um, so some of the values that we're hoping to show up as we work with all of you and the community partners are to number one, learn from your experiences. And you know, if you look around the room and you see all those dots and we've heard from everyone here, there's a lot of different perspectives and expertise and wisdom in this room. And I think in creating that home visiting system that we want, we want to build on what you know and what you're doing. We want to support and expand those collaborative relationships. So number one goal for us is really to try to expand those tables beyond the folks who've been sitting at the leaderships, on the leadership teams. Um, historically, we have a lot of folks who bring that history and that experience, and that's awesome. You have developed and I and Robin and when and other folks have years and years and years of history sitting at tables and acknowledging that a lot of the folks sitting at that tables are, as my colleague Laura likes to say, nice white ladies, right? And we need to broaden those tables and bring in our culturally responsive programs, our culturally specific programs, who really have deep wisdom in working with uh, more marginalized communities so that we have them, their perspective and wisdom at the Family leadership in home visiting. Oh my goodness. That's something that we really want to build and acknowledge as a gap in our current system. We need to have families at the table creating the vision for what the system looks like and helping us who have power within state systems and within programs to make the right decisions about what to prioritize and how to bring things together to make it work. We want to keep what's working and change what's not. Right? So we don't want to break everything down and start over. We want to learn from all the great work that is happening and we know is happening to create more integrated home visiting systems. <laughs> and then I think, as I said, our resources are really to support the steps. It's, it's a long-term process. Systems change is really long-term. Many of us in this room have been involved in systems work for many, many years. And there's been progress and there's been steps forward and steps backward, um, but that's what we are here for is to really try to keep that momentum going. So we don't start things and then they stop and get lost, right? And keep momentum going. Okay. A little bit about our work. Where did I go? Oh, I was going to say. Supporting, so we have 17 priority recommendations <laughs> that we got from the Home Visiting Committee. We're not going to try to work on all 17 at once because, you know, there's only Rebecca and Kristen and all of the staff. We have all of you, right? We support the work. You guys do the work. Um, but our key priorities for this year are to help build that vision, 
we really know collectively where we want to go um, and to build that culture of relationships. I mean, I, I know it's cliche and we've all heard it, but it is so true that the heart of systems change work is relationships and people being able to honestly talk together, to bring authentic selves, to name what's going on in terms of positionality and power and who's not built, who's not being flexible and who is and where the resources are coming from. And that takes time, right? We don't come into relationship instantly, but I already feel like the relationship building in this room and how people talked about like their roots and home visiting and receiving services and delivering services, it's like warming my heart. Like that is so huge. And that's what we're here to do, to try to do today. Expanding and strengthening governance. I'm going to talk about governance structure in a minute um, and do a little explanation there. But again, building family leadership, expanding the table to include more community culturally, culturally specific programs. Tribal partnerships is something that we really need to work on. Um, and then to work with the advisory. And then on the other side, we have what I think of as more like mechanics. <laughs> um, we have Working around funding, that's a huge issue for systems, right? Legislators and policymakers love to fund programs and serve more children and often ask, like, why should we why should we put money into infrastructure, coordination, workforce, things like that? But that's what we need to really be advocating for and working about. And then evaluation. I am a researcher at heart, right? So this is an opportunity to hopefully be really use data, support our collective work together. We've been doing evaluation, looking at systems indicators of change over time in our regional um, home visiting systems evaluations. We'll be doing that as well as working on starting or I don't even know, starting is not the word because since I started working in Oregon in like uh, 1998, I've been like, how come there's not an integrated early childhood data system? <laughs> and sometimes it seemed like there might be one. And here we are almost 30 years later. And guess what? Still no integrated early childhood data system. But maybe in the future. Okay. I said I was going to talk a little bit about advisory structure. Now, many of you probably can't see this. It's kind of little. But in your packet, there's one that you can hopefully read. And this is, as I said, current group structure. This is our sort of working model of various advisory structures. This has shifted a little bit from kind of what the advisory structures were when I was first approached by Sue and her team. Um, but you can see here, family leadership is a little bit floating out here in a bubble. We know there's family leadership happening and parent advisory councils at the hub levels and other places where family leadership is happening. So we want to figure out where and how do we get parents talking about home visiting. It might be happening already. If it is, let's hear about it. Let's figure out who's doing it right and how they're doing it and then figure out how we can get real family voice at this table creating the vision and helping us do the work. That's, that's a priority for us. Then up here, there's the Early Learning Council, which Sue talked about. There's the Homesing System Committee. These are their super high-level charges. Then right here, right here, is, is you guys. This is us. Um, and your specific role, you've got a lot of communication flows here, but is to provide real thought partnership, guidance, and advocacy for our center's work. And that, that again, is going to rely on input from the collaborative, which is over here. So the collaborative and Kara and Anna, if you have better words than I do to describe it, please weigh in. But my, my understanding of the collaborative is it's a loose network of home visiting program model leads. Um, it's been around for a long time and basically was started as a way to build connections across from major program models in our state to support shared workforce development efforts, to um, talk about how to align practice. Is there anything else you'd add to that? Great um, job. Okay. Great job. So it's a loose network of program models. And we have a lot of those program models. These are all the ones in orange that are currently part of that collaborative. 
And there's a couple of you know places where it's not, right? So it's it's been primarily the state funded models, although not exclusively, but the major models in the state. Um, so that's going to be how we connect <clears throat> to really what's going on in the field and with those home visitors and hearing those voices and making sure there's real learning and sharing. So, and then we're down here doing the program that are neutral resources. So that's kind of our advisory structure. It's a lot of committees and councils and steering teams and blah, 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 but hopefully this will help you to kind of see where you are in relation <laughs> to all the other advisories. Okay. I'm going to share a little video with you um, because this is a it's a framework for systems change that we have been using on our research team and has really helped us in several different projects um, thinking about how do you approach really transformative systems change and that it doesn't happen overnight and that often there's things happening simultaneously and so I'm going to just play the video hopefully this will work. Um, We'll do a little introduction to this, what we call the Three Horizons Framework. And then I'm going to confuse you by calling it Four Horizons.
Okay, so I'm just going to toss out there, what do people, what are reactions to this? Is this something that you can see as like helpful in how we think about the work? Um, any reactions, any things that struck you about what you liked or questions about this framework? We're going to be talking about it more today. I love this. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm like making notes. I'm going to show yeah. this to my team on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, I think what I love about it, particularly when I think about the the H two area, that transition point, like that's the messy and fun part, and it has a place in space. And so, like, how do you? Um, I think it did a nice job of sort of honoring and recognizing sort of currently what's happening and sort of setting forward like we want to get over here and it's going to be like really zigzaggy and messy and that's okay. So owning that piece, I think is really important. Mm -hmm. And then constantly going back and reflecting like what do we need to carry forward, what do we need to toss behind out of this H2 work. Yeah, I like that it. Um... It's a true representation. I mean, a lot of times, especially as you go through the transformation of change, um, most people mm -hmm. think it's a start and end point, and it's going to be easy. I love it. It's so great. <laughs> um, but we lose people along the way. Um, and having that as a diagram for this is where we are, this is where we want to be, and it's going to be messy. I, I just really appreciated the way that it broke it down, and definitely something I'm going to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> But I think tagging on to what both of you said, I was thinking about Donalda and I, our conversation before saying our workforce are tired and hurting mm -hmm. and underpaid and I just have to just hold them. Mm -hmm. I just hold a lot of what they're experiencing. And I think of this, I mean, it's exciting mm -hmm. that, that this H2 is, is such a, it's such a messy time and might take a minute. And I just, I, I just have that one in name. Like, how do we, how do we hold on to this workforce and honor them today? You know, we, they can't wait for, you know, thirty dollars an hour. Um, we're not there yet. We would, we we can't wait to get there. But some of these, you know, what you currently have in H one listed here, and I think about 
you know, I feel like I'm an entrepreneurial mindset and I'm like, all right, let's fix how let's, we can throw, um, we need to just throw a lot of money at that and then we can get there. And I you know it's not that simple, uh, but I'm just feeling that tension of what you said of, but today um, we need to give people to care for. And I'm just, just naming that out there mm -hmm. of just yeah. what I'm feeling about the excitement and the, you know, we can't wait for for twenty nine thirty one school yeah. like right. right here you know I'm thinking of yeah. <laughs> biennium yeah. um, like oh how do we hold them today yeah in alignment with what you're saying I'm thinking about um, I was talking to someone around the omnibus legislation mm -hmm. that's happening mm -hmm. federally and and locally and um, mm -hmm threats to home visiting that's happening at the federal level. And that's just in my mind. Because um, we're at this time of, in a, in, like we have to innovate. Mm -hmm. We're also, I feel like in a collective crisis um, that is eroding, uh, uh, eroding some of the healthiest aspects of our society. And that's just in my mind too. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm very glad that we're here because um, me mobilization is critical. Yeah. And I appreciate what you're saying too about that. focusing on like supporting each other and the workforce now and how do we do that while also like maybe looking at some of the things that are burning out our works and things that need to change, right? Move towards that horizon three, right? Well, not, we can't just automatically give people $30 an hour. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Ah, I'm gonna come back. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, was it or? <laughs> um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Yeah, this is a like first draft. Bye, Sue. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Um, and there's a copy of this in your packet, so you can pick out a bigger one that might be a little bit easier for me. This is something that we are going to be thinking about and talking about and building on together over the course of the next years to come. Because this is thinking about what are the what are the three horizons look like for home visiting? And you'll notice here our fourth horizon. Remember, I said I was going to confuse you. I, I stole this idea transparency from work that was done in the Metro Portland area through the Kindergarten Already Network. Mm -hmm. And they were using the Three Horizons framework and I think correctly observed that, yes, we're in the current system. We also need to acknowledge the history that came, what came before us. And that goes beyond even the individual tables when you think about root causes and systemic racism and structural racism and how that has shown up and how it has affected mm -hmm. our current system and what's not working. So we wanted a model that really names that and puts that out there in terms of thinking about, all right, that has built a system that we know is not working for everybody. Um, and maybe not even working that great for the people it's working for, but probably so. So this is what we've come up with. We're gonna come back to this our work at the center is going to be figuring out where this Horizon 2 stuff is happening. Where is that happening and how can we learn from it and elevate it and support it, right? Because these are the innovative changes, hopefully the ones that get us towards Horizon 3. We're also, we have some ideas about what Horizon 3 looks like, but we need a really strong collective vision of how we're going to get there. So this is something we'll be coming back to a lot in our work together. Um, and so I, I like I hope that that I'm glad to hear that that horizon three framework resonated with you all. We are going to be coming back to it. We're actually going to be coming back to it even today, um, this afternoon and some of our work together. Okay. All right. And speaking of working together, uh, oops, where's Susan? 
We lost her. Yep, oh, here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just have to plug in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Start. Um, before we get too far down the road, uh, I think it is really important for us to start to build a shared understanding of how we want to do that work together, what the role of the steering team is, what are the core values that we want to bring to um, the work that we do outside of this, but also within this group, and sort of making sure we're owning like all of the different power and positionalities that are in this room, right? We have folks in this room who oversee and fund programs, programs that are sitting in this room and that receive funding. We have folks who have been at some of the tables for a long time. We have other folks who are new to these conversations. Mm -hmm. um, and represent other kinds of programs who haven't been as included in the network and the system. So I just want us to own that and think about together how we want to have our core values and then talk, we're going to talk a little bit about some group agreements as well. So I'm going to turn it over to Susan for the next part. We are, we have 1145, we're headed towards lunch. Feel free to wiggle during this part if you need to stand up. Um, in your packet, there is a diagram. We're not going to linger on this, but do you find it's really helpful as we're working with groups, as we're owning our own positionality, as we're using empathy and thinking about all of the different groups and individuals and the intersectionality um, that they live in every day? Uh, the, the six conditions of systems change model is really helpful. And what we know flat out is that our industrial systems, our white dominant culture is built to keep our focus on policies, practices, and resource flows, all of which are essential. It's how the doors open, it's how the work gets funded and moves forward. However, what we in this room know, and especially with home visiting as we sit on the floor with mamas and babies, is that it's relationships and connections and acknowledging power dynamics that really help us get into relational change. But that is not easy to capture in data spreadsheets. It's not easy to put a report or a white paper in front of a policymaker to say, here, amidst everything else, here's how you should, should be thinking about the world. And underneath that, transformative change actually happens when we can shift mental models. When we can say a doula can have as much if not more impact on the perinatal health of the mother and child than an obstetrician, right? Like we, we have some mental models that are very firmly in place. So I wanted to hold this here and we have two questions for you. We originally thought we were gonna do it in a mentee. I'm just going to capture, mm -hmm. um, because of the size of the screen, I'm gonna capture your thoughts on a mural that will be available to you all outside of this. But we have two questions we'd like to talk through because you are not, um, you are not the ultimate decision maker team, you are not, right? You are the steering team. And so we wanna to think together with you about what does it mean to you to steer? What might that look like now and as you live into this work together? And the other question then that will surface is what values and guide our work? And you all actually have started answering this as I was listening to your comments on the horizons, right? You're talking about one value that can drive you is embracing innovation. And then it's yes and, hold on, we need to think about our current workforce, right? And caring for them deeply because they are suffering right now. Um, we also wanna be aware of state and federal opportunities and threats, right? So first, um, well, and I'm curious, does do values versus the definition of steering, does one of those ping for anyone? They'd like to share what might our values or our definition of steering look like? I'm going to pull on the thread of the values, but I think it could go in the other place too, but just sort of Thinking about what you were saying, Karen, I think it is so important that as we are embracing innovation, we want to go, go, go. 
you're only going to get as far as the current system can handle. Mm -hmm. And so I think part of what we have to do is not only embrace innovation, but as leaders, like be realistic. I mean, how do you, we have to also prepare the workforce, prepare the systems for change. Mm -hmm. And that often takes time, but you'll, it will, I, th I think you'll gain that back by having change stick rather than having it just sort of revert back to what it was or even more chaotic than it was, you know, all those things. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's a yin and a yang, I think, like just go, 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 but also let's like make sure all the conditions are right. So embrace innovation and be realistic with the why behind that being that if we prepare the system and workforce for change, we're more likely to have that change. So, And at the same time, not falling into complacency. Well, we can't do it yet, right? Because that will also be the killer. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. can't get complacent about it. We've got to constantly be on that edge. I think it's okay. I'm coming towards you, so. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have this just go around and share. That way we hear all voices. Does that work for everybody? Um, <laughs> yeah, one of the things that I was thinking about the values is, um, you know, Sue was talking about how there's you know, work. The council said, hey, let's the you know, spotlight on this work on home design systems about two years ago. And at that point, there was um, a work group that was formed. And when Kara was a part of that, um, but, yeah, <laughs> Kara really, and, and um, similar community again. But if we were tasked with, like, okay, what are, how do we come up with some recommendations for the home design steering committee? Or the committee, I should say, not certain. And we all felt, I just want to, a little uncomfortable because of the timeline mm -hmm. that we weren't able to do really authentic engagement um, with the workforce, right? With families who are participating or receiving the services. And that was a hard place for us. So we really leaned into a lot of reports and um, information that was generated in the past. Um, and it's very current, like from the community, the community system. I mean, there was a lot of great information for us to look at that informed those recommendations that were in the community. But it feels like for me, it is a value. It's like, I just kind of feel like, it's like we need to do a lot of ground truthing, mm -hmm. you know, and just like that, that three is, and I know we're going to be working on building the first year of the family leadership, but I think that that is like always been like, for me around the values, like, okay, how do we really center families of those individuals who are receiving the service or providing the service in this work. And so I, I just I keep on that. Thank you. So ensure authentic engagement of the workforce and families. I remember feeling that on that on the mm -hmm. word right. Like seek ground level truth. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Jennifer. Um I was thinking about, I mean I think this was in something Beth shared the the idea of being family centered, but I think that given that so many of us have sort of long roots in doing home visiting, the principles of, and I think they're tied to infant mental health and reflective practice, at least that's how I know, but that idea of holding the baby in mind. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that's grounding as we try to do new work together to approach it from what it feels like for families. I am thinking about values in particular connected to data collection, use, and two things come to mind to me around transparency and sort of applying critical analysis to decisions we make about what data, why, for whom, and how it could be used or misused. And um, having those conversations about how we will understand how change is happening and for whom, as well as what that, what the impacts of that. Um, I'm thinking a lot about the workforce and the potential to lose workforce and. So the, the urgency that is there and glad to hear so much around time 
and uh, just all this attention around go slow, go fast, you know, and um, thinking about uh, it's very easy for me to think in terms of timeline, very sequential from here to there, but also really wanting to consider, you know, what can happen simultaneously. Um, and also knowing that to have credibility with people, you know, what is there any low hanging fruit? Is there, are there some, some things that can happen um, that can help us make clear that it's not going to be conversation for Okay, I want to just double check. I heard in there a couple of things. One is acknowledging the tension of the pacing, as well as really that we have the opportunity that we could be driven by the value of showing system credibility by showing results, right? We know that this is the long term, right? Pamela, you started us off at the beginning saying, we're in this for a long time. Uh, welcome. <laughs> and, uh, but that there are things we can be doing now, especially to retain our and and I think also um, as Gwen was saying too, though that when there is an urgent timeline in place, how that detracts what you can really do. So I know that those <laughs> that's all bundled things. Okay, so um, I was thinking about with values, um, really respect for the families. Um, with the system of care, like my main initiative this year, and we put a lot of money towards it, is incorporating their lived experiences and you know, their voices in the work that we're doing and um, showing that respect to, you know, they are the individuals that can best guide the work. So um, I really am excited about the leadership, family leadership piece of this because I was working on it for a bit. Um, and um, the flexibility that needs to um, be considered um, throughout this process on every single level possible through um, this that that is uh, something that I find that we all say, but um, once you try to put it into practice, it's not the easiest when you can figure all of the constraints and so um, really considering that as an important piece to all this. Um, I do have um, some information about steering or we yes. have that different. Absolutely. We can, this is your, your all's process okay. and those who um, can speak to it, we can circle back. So when I think about uh, what steer means for me, I really feel like um, it's an opportunity of, to be a vessel um, that is going to guide and direct um, the actions and outcomes that we are hoping to put into place. Um, for me, uh, steering is more like a like tool, like a tool to um, really pay attention, not the, the goal of being there, but most mostly understand the process of, and then I feel like uh, sometimes we are focused so much and uh, completing something, and and we forgot about who uh, we are serving because they're so different. Each house had the different process and different needs at the same time. So I feel like it's important to really slow down. And if we are develop, developing a system, it has to be inclusive and sensitive to the, um, to the community that we are serving. And in our center, we notice that we serve different groups. But a, a person that I drive from or live all the time in Portland, is different than a person or a teacher that are, is emerging to the culture because they feel in every day the need, the problem, the struggling. So I feel like it's important to not only focus on the service that we are 
try to get, but I also grow up and die about what we want to get. Thank you. So I captured your values of slow down, be inclusive and sensitive to those we're serving, as well as this beautiful thought around steering of like steering is a tool to help us pay attention to the process of how we get where we're. When I think about steering, I do place myself in the beautiful mm -hmm. environment, and <laughs> then knowing that the course is in a straight line, mm -hmm. and it's okay to stop, you know, at a rest stop, and like think about what we're doing. The course is really not, or maybe going back around and like making a loop. Okay. Um, so being steering is not a straight line, um, and then those values. The one word that came to mind was transparency for the workforce. Um, change is scary. Sometimes it feels really fast. And when that happens, when you're trying to support family, you have more challenges. So if you're a person in the workforce who doesn't feel supported, then sometimes it can be challenging to support those resources. Relationships that are built, broken, and so just you know, this idea of transparency. Uh, transparency with our workforce, relationships matter. And as we're steering, we have the ability to slow down or even to pull over to the side of the road, to get out of the car, stretch a little bit, look at the horizon and figure out, okay, where are we gonna be? Thank you, Chelsea. Uh, so one of the thoughts that comes to me with the values is maybe that fourth horizon that we added in um, and I know I, I haven't even been in this world of work as long as a, a lot of other folks at this table. So it's something maybe I need to like learn more of a perspective on, but just like this thought of, oh, well that's been done before and it didn't work mm -hmm. or, oh, well we saw that and somebody already tried that. And so I think there's there's this piece to kind of think through of, well, the conditions were different. The environment was different, maybe we can go back to something that has been tried. And then conversely, oh yes, we did, you know, being wise to the, this has worked and it, did, it didn't work. And that's part of that historical knowledge too. So um, that's just the piece that I kind of think about as a factor to, to hold in, in, in doing this work all the time. Be wise, consider the current conditions, revisit old and new life. And so. I think, you know, and mine's somewhat related to yours, actually, although there were a bunch of things I wanted to say, but where I, where I, where I want to put this out is around really having a learning orientation. And really, that's been, it's been such a journey for me over the past, I don't know, four or five years in thinking about things that I thought I knew and had been taught and that history that I bring with me and realizing like, oh, maybe questioning some of those assumptions and maybe being open to different stories or different ways of knowing and understanding that that is really going to help us get at that mindset shift, that paradigm shift you have to get to, I think, in order to make systems change. So learning orientation and bringing it with you and just being aware of where are my own history, you know, knowledge showing up and how is that getting in the way of me listening other stories. Yeah. Love that. Um, I wrote down curiosity in that learner's mind. I love that. Uh, and with for me, the steering. I think I think of this uh, work that we're doing together is like stewarding the vision of you know, like caretakers ourselves of this community. This what we're entering into. As I was thinking, uh, the spirit of families and caretakers. And what we're doing with the vision and the purpose help guide that and keep that uh, alive. And then values, I you know, I think Anna, to your point a little bit, and others have, I think about through the eyes of families, whenever we can put like a I can see like a hologram of a beautiful family in the center of the space because I think as professionals, and we did the introductions and I didn't talk about my visiting experience and everything, but we get really 
um, stuck in how we see the world through professional systems eyes and through our program models and through follow that structure. And if we can keep that, like I value the family through their eyes because then we see things totally different than the structures that we work mm -hmm. in. And so that's what I value. I think my contribution is really similar to yours. I'm a huge fan of ecological systems theory and starting with the child and the family and, and keeping that at the forefront of our minds while we're looking into those different levels of their system and us being a little bit further out from um, the immediate child and family. That's something that's uh, important to me in terms of steering and with values, I think something that I would love to see is how we hold each other accountable in this space in terms of being uh, anti-bias and anti-racist and reminding ourselves of those histories and uh, the ways that they're influencing the work that we're doing on our day-to-day -day lives and how we're bringing that into the space. I would just build on what others have said, honestly. Um, the idea of, you know, approaching it from a curious sort of mindset really resonates with me. Um, and then also just an acknowledgement, and others have spoken to this as well, that um, systems are resistant to change. And, you know, creating that change and finding that change is difficult. And, you know, it's not a linear path. And there are instances where that can get a little disheartening. You know, but it's important to to stay the course and keep on doing the work. Sorry, I had a thunder call. Oh <laughs> no! Well, I'm glad you're back. With me. I think I understand. If we're talking about steering and our values. Exactly. What is it? What is that concept yeah. of screen bring up for you, Donalda? And what are the values that if you yeah. as a steering team hold will Do most help you? Means kind of guiding, but it also means not rigid. Your steering is not rigid, not going in that direction. Steering means you have more nimble. A value would be inclusiveness. And I'm also going to start to learn how to unpack what belonging means, mm -hmm. belonging as it relates to DEI, mm -hmm. and how belonging really encompasses all of those things, as long as it's not a red side blue, but how to unpack and utilize belonging to its full extent. Bird of my friend, thoughts on steering, what that means for you, or the values you hope we hold as a mm. I don't know. I was thinking earlier about. Well, I come from PSU where we're broke. <laughs> and um, the landscape is changing so rapidly around us. And so I think about what does that mean when, you know, there's there will be opportunities to make changes that will come quickly that we want or don't want, right? That like we didn't, you know, that the, the landscape is, our landscape is changing. Um, so I guess in some ways I think about navigation and there's a way that I, you know, I love the idea about like making a plan and being set up, I love that, but I don't know I don't know if we'll always have the time. And not even from a, like, I think some things will just change. 
Um, so it feels a little bit like navigation um, and adaptability. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And we will revisit these time and time again. Carol one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think in special education, we give a lot of thought to um, the work of shifting attitudes and beliefs. Um, and that's heavy work. That's I think it was it's, that's the transformative change, right? That shift in attitudes and beliefs, and that I think towards um, in our journey towards uh, this uh, new system that we want to see would add uh, anti-ableist practices to our yeah. to our thinking. Um, I'm kind of building on what Inala said about belonging and uh, would add that. And I think um, I think our role in steering um, is really keeping our heads up so that we're able to see the challenges and barriers um, and and navigate navigate them. Um, and so, you know, building on that idea of remaining flexible and um, boy and state, you know, and state systems change, uh, really that goes slow to go fast. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've already submitted our, what we wanna see happen for the 2025 legislature that was, that was due for us in 2023. Um, and so when you think about, uh, I think Sue Tara mentioned thinking about 2029 or 2030, right? Um, unfortunately, it's, it takes it takes that long sometimes in state systemic change. Mm -hmm. um, but I also really appreciate uh, so many voices at this table who have talked about the fact that we can really, it's, um, it's families, communities can move, move faster. And so figuring, mm -hmm. really, really figuring out how we, um, we leverage that and really keep families and communities at the center of work. Yeah, um, I'm gonna come right back to you, but like for me, it's so hard to conceive of the fact that the policy option packages your request for 25 have gone in, right? Which feels like very soon. Although we know in the process of democracy and bureaucracy, it's not. And yet we also know that families and communities can move quickly. But how did families and community inform that 2025? Like there is, um, I'm gonna use a word and I might, I, please bear with me that it, it might not be the perfect word, but there is such a falseness in we want to listen to communities and have communities guide what's going on, and yet there's no connection in this work. And you, as a steering team, supporting the coordination center, helping direct the coordination center, will have access to say, our timelines are not in right relationship with communities, the families, the providers. And so I just, I will not be around this table for very long. You all will continue this work. I'll see you at other tables. But I just, I want to encourage you to be raffle rousers here. I'm all about I I feel like you spoke my mind. <laughs> I've been, um, I, I just feel like I've been so mad and frustrated that the system is building itself in in a quiet room in the back while family and, and saying family voice matters and it clearly does not. Yeah. And so I think our value needs to be as an anchor. Um, I know we're steering, but we, we're like we're gonna set a deep, deep anchor into this value that family voice guides, full stop. And we just cannot we cannot let any other table, any other flow chart um, exist without a, this anchor in family voice and empowering families. I just feel really, really strongly about 
is not, this is not okay. And Oregon has the opportunity to, to be a leader in our nation um, for, for this work. And we saw at the start early, you guys spoke about systems change. And at the next start early, you know, when we think about what we're going to say, that Oregon set the tone is that we we made dramatic shifts to to put family voice at the center. Um, so I just feel very, very strongly and committed to that. And it, it's it's it is our it is belonging. It is DEI work. J, uh, that justice, the justice is that families speak first and then systems follow. So I don't, I don't know how to change that. I just have felt very frustrated about it for a long time. And then I said it. Now I will call my cousin. Yeah. <laughs> I think I started. I think, um, I don't know that I have anything more to add. And um like pulling up a little bit on this thread and also thinking about some of the historic some pieces. I think I, I'm one that doesn't necessarily live really in the past, but I think when we understand some of the policies of how they're set and what they were intended to do, it's gonna help us break those down. And and I think what well, the biggest anchor, and I love that analogy too, is holding families really sacredly at the center, which I don't think some of our, I know many of our historical uh, system work and some of the policies, whether it's in whole business or other things, but this is one of the topic, haven't always done that. And it's really been done to people for hours. And so like, how do we do that? And also just to also pull on the thread of the timeline, it's impossible to think about like planning for the 2029 20, session, like, right? Like that seems like further away. So how do we as a steering body help to advocate for more, um, more power at a regional level to be able to engage in this work and keep that consistency flowing so that we're not in this lag cycle and having to wait and hold that. So. Maybe that could be something, whether that's a value, whether that's uh, our role as a steering, uh, really think about how do we put the power where the power needs to be? I want to pause. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Pamela, friend, what are your thoughts? Thank you. I just love this discussion and um, uh, just a couple things to add. On the steering side, I feel like part of steering is also providing some guide rails, guideposts to keep us on task, because I think everyone here at the table knows you can, you start with something small like, hey, let's fix the home visiting system. And then you hear, how about the healthcare system? Let's look at the statewide systems, right? And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and we can't do everything. Um, so just keeping us on task. And for me, around value is always consider the burden that our changes are going to, to that impact that those changes will have at the local level, the home visitors. And I think sometimes we forget that and we come up with great innovations and great ideas. And then we forget that that impact is going to create a burden at the local level and innovations uh, around data systems are a great example. Let's, let's, let's buy a new data system that creates a burden at the local level because we haven't integrated it, but we, we just hand it to them and say, you need to now use this system in addition to all these other systems. So I think we always have to keep that as an anchor as well. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we know that you probably have more to say. I'd like to work with the team. We can maybe in a follow-up uh, give you the opportunity. You'll leave this room. You'll have all these thoughts, these new relationships. You'll have more to say about this. And I know the PSU team will take great care of uh, capturing your wisdom and helping continue to center these values, this vision of what it means to act as a steering team 
and then perhaps we can circle back to the pragmatics um, after we have some food and as we move forward. And um, yes, thank you all for sharing all of that. And then the next part of our agenda was to work on some group agreements, but a little bit over. And I think a lot of the things that you spoke to about values are going to translate into our group agreements. Um, but what I ask you to do is during lunch, you have in your packet a handout, which is just some group agreements that I have drawn from, from other groups that I have worked with. And I would love for you to just take a look at this, maybe mark it up, circle the ones that really resonate with you and make changes or strike out ones that you're like, no, this doesn't make sense or I don't like this. And then instead of spending a lot of time talking about this, um, I would love to collect these from you and then we can bring them back with your input to our next meeting and talk a little bit more about group agreements. That, if that's okay with everybody. We're going to pivot because our lunch is here and we're over the time and I know I need a break and a little bit of nourishment. So let's do that and we'll come. Feel free to grab out of their names. names. Yeah. Yeah, they, they put them. names on them. Look at they are a little bad. So grab a lunch. <laughs> Restrooms are out there. Kind of, it's going to be a little bit of a brief, but we'll go to like 12, 20 and then we restart. Pamela, we have your lunch here. So, oh, 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 Oh my god, I know. Oh, I don't know. 
The bank bank goes Great. Were you holding your future self in mind? Well, one thing I started doing is in the past, I would never order the things I would be like, I'm going to do it good that day. I'm going to do this. Now, I'm like, you know, I'm going to do it. 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 So where did you guys take me to like a swing um, and then you know, did you go there? Oh, yeah. 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 And my daughter's right now. So last night I had them. Like, this morning they were like, why are we at my house? They were let us leave. It was so funny. So they were a little confused. I was like, yep, nope. And then we'll have my party. Even if you're ready. So we have to do this. Yeah, 
I don't want her. Yeah. I know. Okay, but yeah. no, he's not. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. When it's that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, drive yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Which is like what we can do. Oh, oh. oh. I'm here. Like, 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 I'm here. It was like very and and I the first day it was so so was so 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 the cloud comes here the world. They're like the cloud. Yeah, that's what's happened, right? And I was like, no. I'm like, no, please. Then I don't know. But I'll Yeah, well, there he is. Exactly. Not even that much. I know. I'm not going to be on the other side. I'm 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 going to be Yeah, it's like, why would I go to the 
I think she's making over oh, she, she actually said she had a couple all that
what do we know already in terms of what's going on that might be on horizon two? What are those innovations around sort of the first one? It's expanding and strengthening home building systems governance. And it might be, what do we know that's happening? It might be, what do we hope for in the future? So we're going to be focusing on that horizon two and horizon three, bringing, of course, what we know about horizon one into those conversations. So there'll be one person from our team at each corner to sort of facilitate that conversation, but really just starting to get us thinking about where, what are the pieces that we need to be working on, what are the pieces that are happening that we know about that we can learn from, okay? So this group over here is going to be around expanding and strengthening governance. So that'll be our family leadership work, family conversations, as well as working with uh, culturally specific and tribal partners, how do we expand those? Uh, and how do we strengthen governance to make sure everybody that needs to be in the loop is in the loop and we're hearing from the right people at the right time. Then in that corner, we're gonna have building collaborative culture and shared vision. So this is more, how do we get to a shared vision? How do we make sure that we're building the relationships across the program models, across the state agency partners. Where is that happening? Where do, what, what do we need to be doing around really deepening our relationships and our collaborative culture and developing and advocating for that shared vision for home business? And over here, we're gonna be talking about aligning and uh, <clears throat> ensuring adequate financing for the home visiting system and for the systems work, um, as well as while at the same time, making sure our programs and our workforce have adequate funding to do the amazing work that they're doing. And then over here, we're gonna talk about data and how do we collect systems data? What do we have in terms of systems data? What do we need to know about how the system is working and how can we know it? As well as thinking about where are our data systems at right now and how, how do they need to change so that they're not burning out our workforce, frustrating our families, confusing our providers, and stuff. So we may end up with everybody at one or two of the stations, that's fine, but so think about which one you wanna be a part of and then maybe just kind of gently move your, you can take your chair if you want, bring your cookie or your bag of chips or your sandwich. If you're eating one of those giant salads, feel free to bring it with you and move towards one of those corners. Um, where we'll stay for about 20 minutes. That sounds reasonable. Yes. I might have missed it. I was crunching really nope. hard. <laughs> <laughs> Are we just doing picking one picking one for stay. today? Yeah, uh, just okay. one for today. Got yep, it. yep. But as I said, this is just a start, right? Mm -hmm. Hard to pick. <laughs> These salads are so good. <laughs> they are really good. Yeah. Some too. So let's just maybe let's do a show of hands. So who would want to be a part of this group over here, expanding and strengthening governance? I'll be with you, Katie. Okay. And the leadership. Yeah, Brenda. Thank you. Okay, great. And all that. All right. Uh, over here, vision and collaborative culture, connections across programs. Kara, awesome. Roberta, is that a hand? No. Oh, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else want to be part of that group? Does everybody want to be on financing and data systems? Okay, Chelsea. <laughs> 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 Surprises me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need some help. Financing? How's financing? And then <laughs> data, data. But I also want to do that. I think a lot of people are uncommitted. <laughs> All right, well, we got people in every group, so let's move that direction. I'm going to go over to the finance group. Callie's going to the data group. Kristen is here with our governance group. And Ron and, Ron and Kristen. Yeah, Ron and Kristen. And then Susan, are you? Yeah. Okay. Susan's over there in the corner with shared vision and governance. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 
so kind of keeping in mind what the conditions are happening on financial like news here in terms of things you want to elevate yeah as well as the we're just going to join y'all. Sure. Oh, yeah. I got it. I'm going to go. 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 i Some are going to be on the 
You know, like something you know, there could be multiple so much and putting our box down there. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if I'm here. I'm just saying, I'
So we, you know, we have made some um, advances towards lower one two. So with building collaborative culture and shared vision, Kara shared about the Oregon Early Childhood Inclusion Initiative and how they've been able to markedly increase inclusion rates by taking the pyramid model into communities, but letting the communities track that implementation in the, especially the early intervention, but also early childhood special education home visitors um, are really key and are gifting skills and lots of support to parents. Um, Norma lifted up the challenges with the K-12 system and the difference between, right, that IFSP versus the IEP um, and how families uh, wanting to help this work translate perhaps into that K-12 system eventually too. So they see the benefit of home visiting services to really understand the families that walk in through their doors. Uh, talk about successful experiences in early care and education settings, especially when there's cross problem or cross program problem solving. So lots of different professionals with different sets of experience working together to support families. And then also we build that collaborative culture by respecting and elevating home visiting as essential to outcomes um, further down the road. So that needs to be a part of our shared vision. In an ideal world with innovation at Horizon 3, um, the collaborative culture and shared vision would be that communities have the answer, that we know each other's programs and really we almost serve as ambassadors for each other which led us into this conversation about silos. And so if the goal is de-siloing, we started going down, well, why is de-siloing challenging? And it's really, we have this sense of ownership, right? It's very personal work that we're doing. It also takes place in an ecosystem of scarcity. And it takes time and intention to develop relationships and trust. And that goes between programs and it goes with families. Um, and Rebecca really ended it beautifully by saying, man, there seems to be a real thread of all of this around communication. I think that'll be key. Okay, we talked a lot about Horizon 2 and some places where we need to be paying attention and learning from in terms of financing, um, really identifying the current funding streams for home visiting and making sure part of the Horizon 3 vision was we really need to make sure we have public and private funding working together so that we can have we can have more flexibility and timing and how we use those dollars. We can have more community um, driven kinds of funding structures rather than some of the ways that money is allocated now. We talked about um, some new dollars that are coming into our state that we want to connect to, some initiatives that might be able to support home visiting and home visiting systems. There's Duke dollars that's coming in, some philanthropic dollars that's coming in for family resource centers. So those are things for us to start to understand and learn from. Uh, federal dollars and earmarks being someplace that we might be able to really leverage to support home visiting systems and programs um, with flexibility. Being the Family Connects Oregon as an opportunity for growth that that funding is going to be out there and that are potentially such a good node for the home visiting systems work and really trying to understand that and make sure we build on that. Uh, uh, building on any sort of momentum that we have around Governor Kotak, seeing zero to saying zero to two is a priority area and upcoming legislation being driven by Representative Reynolds. Um, OHEC, an upstream initiative and that funding, which is funding coordination and maybe related to home visiting systems coordination, but we're not entirely clear at this point. And then early literacy money and whether that's going to be released and how home visiting can leverage those dollars as that foundational kind of parenting education and support program from birth to two, especially. Um, so those are some things to pay attention to. Oh, and we talked about pay equity and the importance of pay equity across models and how current funding streams make that almost impossible. And Sarah was sharing and Gwen were sharing about pay equity laws and how that is something we need to learn about and pay attention to as we're looking at funding for home visiting workforce. 
for Horizon 3, we didn't spend a lot of time on this, um, but I think we just felt the theme was really around consistency and flexibility in funding, and maybe thinking about different models that are for state agencies, this biennial process and the sort of scarcity, like what is it, the ebb and flow of dollars over the uh, funding cycles is really hard to deal with. Um, and so other models in states like Washington that are maybe doing that a little bit better. And then really talking about how do we kind of commit to funding based really on community needs. So as opposed to giving X number of dollars for this program, asking what programs does this community need and how what dollars do they need to do it? But anything to add? Okay. So uh, let's, let's come in. back. We have five minutes okay. to do our wrap up. So come back to your space. And we will get you safely on the road after a few last moments. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's just wrapping up. Okay, so just a quick wrap up from Center's perspective. Um, we will take everything that we heard today. We'll come back to you with at least plan to do some more work at our next meeting around experience and have the accounts of our specific work that we're doing around Horizon 2 and 3 and talking with you about that and starting as we start to really move forward to take on some pieces of work and exploring some of these. Um, horizon to the areas. So that's, I think, our next step. We will see you in March. We're going to be meeting the third Thursdays in March. Um, I think from one to two. And I think that was the time that worked for everyone. And if there's anybody who regularly can't make those meetings, please reach out to us so we can figure out a way. Either we need to shift that date or do some work to, to re was a large calendar. So that's what's coming next for us. Awesome. Now you have. Um, I have one of them, piece of paper like this. This is your bumper sticker. We, have a, we if we could just take one minute to think about the bumper sticker is the closing thought. What do you want to communicate about the project? What's important and what is the vision for the future? Use words, art. I know we don't have a lot of time, but just take a minute to like, what is the one or two words that comes to your mind that you would be like, I want everyone to know this. It's, behind me and see that just take a moment and breathe. Mm -hmm. Great. Oh. I know. Uh, Anyone willing to share their books there? I said we can do we can do better for families is what I put as for something to think about. Oh, awesome. and do better. And I did just with the word listen. Oh, Ooh, listen. listen. I did a healthy and supported family thriving. Healthy and supported. Well, families first. I did uh, family family voice is my anchor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know I'm down. we like to be good timekeepers. We want to respect all of your time. We'll keep all of the great things that were collected here and share back. We will see you at the end of the month. Pamela, would you like to say any closing uh, words? And I have a quote too. So I will turn <laughs> it over to you, Pamela, and then I'll read a quote. Yes, thank you, Robin, and everyone who's here. Um, I would just love to share a conversation I had with my boss yesterday. Some of you know her, Kate Wilcox, and she is the maternal and child health manager at OHA. And she also sits on the home visiting systems committee, but I gave her a sneak peek of the new diagram of the home visiting system initiative advisory group structure. And I kid you not, 
her smile was ear to ear. And okay. I, and I'm going to paraphrase. She just said, this is so incredible. I've been waiting 16 years to see this actually take shape. I thought she was going to cry. I mean, it was, it was that kind of moment. And um, that just made me feel a sense of purpose and possibility. So those are my words on, on the bumper sticker, purpose and possibility. And it's just, I'm just really honored to be part of this work along with all of you. So thank you so much for being here and for the work ahead. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing, Kate. The, the quote that I wanted to read, it comes from Henry Ford, but it, coming together is the beginning, keeping together is progress, and working together is success. I think about all of us on this journey, we're starting together. Thank you for coming today and helping us kick off getting all your voices in the room. We really appreciate you. Yes. And if you have time to think about group agreements, if you just want to leave them where you are, that would be great. If you didn't have time, so you had you were like eating your salad, that's all for fun. We will come back. Okay. And thank you. I just want to thank everyone. My heartfelt gratitude as well. And so excited and about it. So thank you all. Drive safely home. Thank you.